All right, Jess, I'm going to kick us off. Psalm 190. Uh, try to do it without an accent. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. How happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk according to the Lord's instruction. Happy are those who keep his decrees and seek him with all their heart. They do nothing wrong. They walk in his ways. You have, command, you have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. If only my ways were committed to keeping your statutes, then I would not be ashamed when I think about all your commands. I praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Never abandon me. Mushankana akashlokisa mo le samao ya haijwa ka ho ahela le ntse la hao le saka ke o batla ka pelo ya ka yotlhe sentumelo go khelowa go khelowa melao ya hao ke bolokile tshepo tshepiso ya hao ke ipola ka pelong ya ka gore ke seke ka o sitisa ke seke ka sitelwa ho boke wena mo bena a ko nthute thato ya hao ka molomo wa ka ke bolela di ka tlhogo tsohle tsetswang molomo wa hao ke thabela ho latela ditemoso tsa hao ho feta moru wa wohle ke nahana ditaelo tsa hao ke mamelle ditsena tsa hao ke thabela ho pheta phethato ya hao nke ke ka lebala lentswe la hao says, deal generously with your servant so that I might live. Then I will keep your word. Open my eyes so that I may contemplate the wondrous things from your instruction. I am a resident alien on earth. Do not hide your commands from me. I am continually overcome with longing for your judgments. You rebuke the arrogant, the ones under a curse, who wander from your commands. Take insult and contempt away from me, for I have kept your decrees. Though princes sit together speaking against me, your servant will think about your statutes. Your decrees are my delight and my counselors. Muya wanga wo nambatela buse. Nkanyise nga fungo lao. Nne zanga zindira ngido zibura. Iwe wambopa. Funze hajine wajifuna. Funzeze maitere e au. A utebeza ndaira zao. Ndi ere kanyema dembe ewa ita. Muya wanga uchirira nga ulambiri. Udobe umvuse nga fungo lao. Ndira ya mazwili umpambanya nayo. Untonde nga mirayo yao. Ndira ya ngoho ndito, ndito dayonyo. Nditama uvuswa nga iwe. Ndi kwamba tere fungo lao Yehova. Ngandi sishonisiwe. Ngandi farendira ye waraija. Nga urindi iwe uruza hombiru yanga. From verse 33. Teach me, Lord, the meaning of your statutes and I will always keep them. Help me understand your instruction, and I will obey it, and follow it with all my heart. Help me stay on the path of your commands, for I take pleasure in it. Turn my heart to your decrees, and not to dishonest profit. Turn my eyes from looking at what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Confirm what you said to your servant, for it produces reverence for you. Turn away the disgrace I dread, Indeed, your judgments are good. How I long for your precepts. Give me life through your righteousness. We osi, nzi kombere ranzo rawena. Unzi kutsula la utsembeseke hakona. Zita kota kutlamulo labanzi monyaka. Iku wa nitsembe rito rawena. Unga pumeli nisiku niringwe leswa kunzi wola wula mabunwa. Iku wa nitsembe lesosu boheke. Utome jamina and guabzo, zita slice and now wawen. Zita high and zita shakile. Ikuan zita banzil and zile, suletel of sawen. Switzonzo shawen, 
ndo swivula emahlweni ka tihosi ndzi nga ri na tingana ndzi ta tsakisiwa ngopfi swileriso swa wena hi ku va na swirandza swileriso swa wena leswi ndzi swirandzaka ndo swi shishima ndzi nga ri vale milawo ya wena Remember your word to your servant. You have given me hope through it. This is my comfort in my affliction. Your promise has given me life. The arrogant constantly ridicule me, but I do not turn away from your instruction. Lord, I remember your judgments from long ago and find comfort. Fury seizes me because of the wicked who reject your instruction. Your statues are the theme of my song during my earthly life. Lord, I remember your name in the night and I obey your instruction. This is my practice. I obey your precepts. E Bwana, wewe ni fungu langu. Nimeahidi kuyatii maneno yako. Nimetafuta uso wako kwa moyo wangu wote. Nihurumie sawa sawa na ahadi yako. Nimezifikiri njia zangu na nimeelekeza hatua zangu katika mahusia yako. Nitafanya haraka bila kuchelewa kuzitii amri zako. Hata waovu wanifunge kwa kamba sitasahau sheria yako. Usiku wa manane ninaamka kukushukuru kwa sababu ya sheria zako za haki. Mimi ni rafiki kwa wale wote wa kuchao, kwa wote wanaofuata mahusia yako. E Bwana, dunia imejaa upendo wako. Nifundishe maagizo yako. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding so that I can learn from your commands. Those that fear you will see me and rejoice, for I put my hope in your word. I knew, I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are just and that you have afflicted me fairly. May your faithful love comfort me as you promised your servant. May your compassion come to me so that I may live. For your instruction is my delight. Let the arrogant be put to shame for slandering me with lies. I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you, those who know your decrees, turn to me. May my heart be blameless regarding your statutes, so that I will not be put to shame. Plains indeed. <laughs> okay. There you go. Iande, het my gemaak en my toebereid. Maak my verstandig dat i ek i geboeie kan leer. Die wat i vrees, sien my en hulle is bly. Want op i woord wag ek. Ek weet, Heere, dat u voordele rechtvaardig is en dat u my uit getrouwheid verdruk het. 
Laat toch die goede tierenheid wees om mij te troos volgens die belofte aan die knig. Laat die barmhartigheden oor mij kom, dat ik kan dewe, want u wet is mij verlustige. Laat die vermetelis beskaan staan, omdat hulle zonder oorzaak mij onrechtvaardig behandel het. Maak maar ek oordink u bevele, laat die wat u vrees na my terugkeer, en die wat u getuienisse ken, laat my hart oprecht wees in u inzettinge, so dat ek nie beskaamd hoef te staan. For your salvation, I put my hope in your word. My eyes grow weary looking for what you have promised. I ask, when will you comfort me? Though I have become like wineskin dried by smoke, I do not forget your statutes. How many days must your servant wait? When will you execute judgment on my persecutors? The arrogant have dug pits for me. They violate your instruction. All your commands are true. People will people persecute me with lies. Help me. They almost ended my life on earth but I did not abandon your precepts. Give me life in accordance with your faithful love, and I will obey the decree you have spoken. Yebos magate, li vila kuli mebu zogube pagate, li medik kinile ezulwini, tuya wenjula titugulwane ne titugulwane, god fagetem bega kwa kwa kungege kutuki, wamiza umhlaba nanyalu uselulu, selogu kwe mamshazane kumiswa ngu, ngobe konge kufane logu konde wenda, Ube umtet for our cobe unga see you in Jabulo Yam, Nabe sang up with a kitten is a kitten in Guam. A nagging if you caught with the Miso Dark, Mobe umpilisi lingak. Ning a waco, Missing Zeus and Gumungul, Mobbing if Funabutuna to Miso Dark. La Babi Bashos a womb bulal, God family, and your capella to Miso Dark. Nifunzi is a good younger end, Noma e Shaganganani, in him cowl. God for any yellow yako eat in Kaul. How I love your instruction. It is, the medita it is my meditation all day long. Your command makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. I have more insight than all my teachers because your decrees are my meditation. I understand more than the elders because I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path to follow your word. I have not turned from your judgment. For you yourself have instructed me. How sweet your word is to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every false way. Linjula garu kilvone lagun kag kisi eja tilenyag ki kan ne umli ingase chanam kari ki kapeta dailo jarao kije dilukileo. Ke tla ishirile e le ruri morena. Ntse shuloshe go ya ka mo o nkhulufeditšego. Morena amogela tapelo ya ka ya go gutumisha gomme o nthute ditailo tsa gago. Ke dula ke ikemisheditše go ba kotsing ya lehu. Fela melao ya ga go yona ga ke le bana. Ba gopo ba nitaile ka sefu fela ga ke aroge ga ke aroge ditailo tsa gago. Ditailo tsa ga go ke le ruo la ka la go ya go ile ke tsona di nthabishago ke ghafetse go pheta ditailo tsa ga go ke tla phela ka tsona go fihla mafelelong I hate those that are double-minded, but I love your instruction. You are my shelter and my shield. I put my hope in your word. Depart from me, you evil ones, so I may be 
so, my, so I may obey God's commands. Sustain me as you promised, and I will live. Do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Sustain me so I can be safe and always be concerned with your statutes. You reject all who stray from your statutes, for their deceit is a lie. You remove all the wicked on earth as if they were dross from metal. Therefore, I love your decrees. I tremble in awe of you. I fear your judgments. Kilobaka <laughs> One twenty nine to one thirty six. Your decrees are wondrous, therefore I obey them. The revelation of your words brings light and gives understanding to the inexperienced. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commands. Ten, ten to me and be gracious to me, as is your practice. as is your practice towards those who love your name. Make my steps steady through your promise. Don't let anything dominate me. Redeem me from human oppression and I will keep your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes pour out streams of tears because people do not follow your instruction. wa Jehova imi makarura uye muri mirairo yenyu yakarura zwirevo zwenyu zwamakadzaka zwakarura zwakavindika kwazo ushingaira kwangu kunondipedza nokuti vavengi vangu havana hanya nemashoko enyu vimbiso dzenyu dzakayedzwa chose uye muranda wenyu anodzidza kunyange ndaka ndaka Derezwa, uye ndichi zinzwa hangu, handika ngani zwirovo zwenyu, kurarama kwenyu kunokara nuku Singapiri, uye murairo wenyu ndiwe sokwadi. Namo ni matambu zike zuripa msoro pangu, asi mirairo enyu ndiyo mufaro wangu, zwirovo zwenyu zunokara zwakarura, ndipe yu kunzisi sakuti ndirara. I call with all I call with all my heart unto me Lord I will obey your statutes. I call to you, save me, and I will keep your decrees. I rise before dawn and cry out for help. 
I put my hope in your word. I am awake through each watch of the night to meditate on your promise. In keeping with your faithful love, hear my voice. Lord, give me life in keeping with your justice. Those who pursue evil plans come near. They are far from your instruction. You are near, Lord, and all your commands are true. Long ago, I learned from your decrees that you have established them forever. Bega ugu supega guami ungi kulule. Moguba angi kosa umteto wako. Mela indabayam ungi senge ungi pilise. Mokwekwezi lako. Ugusindisa gugu denababi. Moguba abafuni izi miso zako. Ububa elebako Jehovah bukulu. Ni pilise mokweza lulelo zako. Aba ngizi ngelayo neba izi tagim baningi. Kepa ubufaga zibako angi chekzuki. Lapo nyibona ama mbuka ngia digibala. Mwaguba au gini izu ilako. Pega uguti nitanda gangaga izi lazelo zako Jehovah. Nipilise ngomusa wako ama zi ako onge aikinizu. Zonge iza lulelo zako ezi lungi leyo zimi gumbe pagati. Princes have persecuted me without cause. But my heart fears only your word. I rejoice over your promise like one who finds vast treasure. I hate and abhor falsehood. But I love your instruction. I praise you seven times a day for your righteous judgments. Abundant peace belongs to those who love your instruction. Nothing makes them stumble. Lord, I hope for your salvation and carry out your commands. I obey your decrees and love them greatly. I obey your precepts and decrees for all my ways are before you. Que mon cri parvienne jusqu'à toi, éternel. Donne-moi l'intelligence selon ta parole. Que ma supplication arrive jusqu'à toi. Délivre-moi selon ta promesse. Que mes lèvres fassent jaillir. Car tu m'enseignes tes prescriptions, que ma langue entende un hymne à ta promesse, car tous tes commandements sont justice, que ta main vienne à mon secours, car j'ai choisi tes statuts, je soupire après ton salut, ô éternel, et ta loi fait mes délices, que mon âme vive et qu'elle te loue. Et que tes jugements me secourent. Je suis errant, comme une brebis perdue. Cherche ton serviteur, car j'oublie par tes commandements. Amen. This is the word of God. This is the word of God about the word of God. This is ecstatic poetry devoted to praising God by praising his word. And I think that as you listen to that, the cumulative effect of the psalmist singing, meditating, communicating the beauty of what God's word is for him makes us think, where, where did he get that from? How did he get to the point where he could write 176 verses about the scriptures and sing them and meditate them and go through it like that. How did that happen in his heart? And then perhaps, how could that happen in my heart? And what would the result be if that was to happen in my heart? So we're going to look at the four points we have behind me. What is the scripture? What is the Bible? What is the word of God? And then once we've understood what that is, then how should we respond to it? And then why should we respond to it like that? And then fourthly, finally, what difference would it make if we put all those things into practice in our lives as people, as individuals, and as the community of Rooted Fellowship? And that's why I've called this sermon Rooted in the Word. I want Rooted Fellowship to be rooted in the Word so that when people look in on this fellowship, <laughs> they see the Word of God lived out 
in all its beauty, in all its joy, in all its simplicity, in all its profundity, in all that it has to say to the world today. Pretoria would be a different place if people lived and believed the Bible. So let's dive in. What is this word that we have? There's eight main words that the psalmist used to describe the word of God throughout this psalm. Uh, you'll have noticed that there's 22 stanzas in this poem. 22 stanzas, each stanza has a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And each of those stanzas starts, each verse of those stanzas starts with that letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's an amazing piece of creative poetry. Eight verses that start with Aleph, eight verses that start with Beth, eight verses that start with Gimel, all the way through the Hebrew alphabet. And in almost every single one of those verses, there is a word that means the word of God. And in fact, he's chosen eight words to describe the same thing. And I've given you them on the screen behind me. Instruction is the one he uses most, or sorry, second most. Uh, and it means law. Uh, he's saying what we have in the Bible, what we have in, in what he referred to as the Torah, is instruction. It's telling us how to live. It's telling you, here is your life, here are the components of your life, here are the domains of your life, the things that you must think about, and here is how you must live in them. Here are the ways in which you must think about these domains of your life so that you can honor God in every detail of your life. Instructions, precepts, decrees, statutes, commands. And commands, they think mostly of the Ten Commandments that God gave to his people at Sinai. Uh, I wonder how many of those commandments we could list off the top of our head. I'm not embarrassed anybody right here. But those commands are meant to be the things that we think about day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, as we work out how to live our lives in respect of the God who created us. No other gods before him. Not taking his name in vain. No idols, remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honoring our father and our mother. And then not murdering or anything like murdering. No adultery or anything like adultery. No thieving or anything like thieving. No lying or anything like lying. No coveting or anything like coveting. Those are the things that must rule our lives. The commandments of the Lord that are summarized in two wonderful commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. These are the things that if we were to think about them day in, day out, minute after minute, would transform utterly our lives and the experiences of those in our homes, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods. Everything would be changed. <laughs> Commandments, judgments. The, the Lord has judged things. He has set them out. What he will do if we disobey, what he will do if we obey, his judgments are there. His word, he communicates with us. He is a speaking God. He is the God who is there and he is not silent. He speaks and he speaks and he speaks. He wants people to listen to him. And then wonderfully, promise is a God who makes abundant promises. All of his promises are yes and amen in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he promises us things. And, and, and he chooses these words to talk about the word of God because, in fact, the word is so multifaceted, like a diamond, that you can look at it from any angle and, and see something slightly different in it. It's said that the Danish people have more than 100 words for snow. Because snow, when it falls in Denmark, it, it's different. It's not always the same sort of snow. And so they can talk about snow in so many ways because their life is filled with snow for four months of the year. A hundred words of snow. He's got eight words for the Bible. How many words, how many ways of you thinking about the word do you have? Is the Bible just a book on the shelf? Or is it something that is living that you look at, that you consider, that you reflect, that you taste? Um, I had the privilege yesterday of going uh, wine tasting with Oni in, in Cape Town, in, in around the wine lands. Uh, and as you look at the descriptions of the wines, the people who are trying to sell you the wines are saying notes of blueberry, and chocolate, and salt, and whatever they say. They're looking at the wine and they're describing it in all these ways because they love wine. They appreciate it. They've got to know it. The psalmist has got to know the word, and he's got all these words for us. C can you see the beauty of the word in the words that he uses for the word? That's what he's wanting you to see. But not only that, he wants you to see the qualities of the word. 
the qualities of the instruction, the law, the commandments, and so on and so forth. L let, let this wash over you, these next eight verses. Verse 7, he says, When I learn your righteous judgments. When he looks at the word of God, he sees it as something that is righteous, that is right, that judges things correctly. The righteous judgments. When he contemplated verse 18, he prays to God that he would open his eyes so that he could see the wondrous things from your instruction. He's expecting as he opens the word of God to be amazed. It's wonderful. It's amazing. He is convinced that if he prays this prayer, as he opens the word of God, that God actually will hear this prayer and actually will reveal wondrous things. If you have the habit of reading the Bible, what would happen if, before you opened it, you quieted your heart, and you took this verse, and you said, Lord, open my eyes, my blind eyes, so that I can contemplate wondrous things from your instruction." He's convinced that it's righteous, that it's wondrous. He's convinced, that, verse 89, that it's forever. What else do you know that is forever in this changing world, in this transient world, in this world where everything is always changing, when we're bombarded by things, uh, where politicians say one thing one week and another thing the next week, and God says, no, no, I, my word is always the same. It's always forever. It's firmly fixed, says the psalmist, in heaven where things do not change. Look at verse 96. Can't get your mind around that. I have seen, says the psalmist, a limit to all perfection, but your command is without limit. I don't know how to understand that. I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried. I don't know, but what he's saying is that when we come to the Word of God, all limits disappear. Th there is something that is absolutely infinite before our minds and before our souls, and before our hearts. His commands are without limit. There's nothing that we didn't talk to. There's no area of our lives that are unaffected by what we see in the world. We're going to sing this at the end of our sermon, Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Illuminates us. You are righteous, Lord, verse 137. Your judgments are just whatever God says about whatever he says it about, he's absolutely right. We need to hear this but because often we come to the word of God and it's normal and natural and I, like you, we have this experience. We come to the word of God and we initially and instinctively disagree with what God says. And I'm thinking particularly about a few areas of our lives. When we come to God's word about justice, instinctively we want God to be for us and for our tribe and not necessarily for everybody else's tribe but when God comes to us and tells us that all men are created in his image and all men deserve to be treated with equity and with justice absolute fairness we need to agree with that we need to say with the psalmist you are righteous Lord and your judgments are just the same is true of the next one your decrees that you issue are righteous and altogether trustworthy we can put the whole weight of our lives onto everything that God says in his word. And so if in verse 137, I mentioned justice and equity, let me mention in verse 138, everything that God says about sex and sexuality. Do we really believe that the decrees that God issues are righteous and altogether trustworthy as far as my sexuality goes? Do I really believe that when God says that the only context for sex is lifelong marriage between one man and one woman, do we believe that? Do we put the weight of our life on it and do we live it out? I don't want people to think that this is a guilt trip. And I don't want people to think that if in the past they have not lived up to that standard, that, that God is therefore not for them. Absolutely not. We're going to find that out later in the psalm. But from this point forward and going forward, are we prepared to say with the psalmist, the decrees that God issues in that particular domain 
are righteous and altogether trustworthy. Verse 116. The entirety of your word is truth. The entirety of your word is truth. Each of your righteous judgments endures forever. I rejoice over your promise like one who finds vast treasure. 162. Vast treasure. The psalmist has all these words for the Bible because he knows it intimately. And when he talks about the Bible in all these different ways, what he means is that the Bible is righteous, wondrous, forever, without limit, illuminating, just, trustworthy, truthful, and a vast treasure. And he's singing and he's composing his poem and he's calling it out to us and he's saying, will you join with me in singing this song about this word? <laughs> this is what I believe. Do you believe it? This is what I see. Do you see it? It's what every song and every poem has ever done in, in history of the world. It's always, do you see things the way I see them? Can you see what I see? Can you rejoice in what I rejoice in? This is marvelous. This is what the word of God is. And therefore, the psalmist is reflecting as he sings on how to respond to this word. If this is true, then how should we respond? Look at what he says. Uh, and we don't have time to go into each of these words, and I've just taken a, a selection, a sample. But because it's righteous, wondrous, forever, limitless, illuminating, fair, trustworthy, and completely true, therefore we follow. Therefore we respect. Therefore we observe. Therefore we meditate. Therefore we consider, we keep, we treasure, we proclaim. And that as individuals and as a community. This is how we respond to this word. Because this word is like this, that implies and even demands that we do this with it. What is the point of having a word that is this wonderful if we read it, close it, and ignore it? We can't do that. We mustn't do that. So we follow, we respect, we observe, we meditate, we consider, we keep, we treasure, and we proclaim. Look at this picture behind me. This is a picture of a church in Korogo in the north of Ivory Coast. I was here just before Christmas. Um, the one white face in the middle is a friend of mine. Uh, he's called Benjamin, uh, and he and I go way back. He's an Acts 29 planter in Ivory Coast. Um, he went to Ivory Coast. He lived in a village that speaks Jula. Jula are, are an unreached people group in the north of Ivory Coast. He learned Jula, and he's planting this church amongst the Jula people. And this is maybe one of the first Jula churches that has ever existed. Amazing. So wonderful. This is a context in rural Ivory Coast where the people don't necessarily know how to read and write. Um, I don't know anything about South Africa, so I don't know if that's a context that is familiar for you uh, in South Africa. In terms of Ivory Coast, this is a very common scenario. Villages that speak the languages um, but don't necessarily have the Bible uh, because they can't read it. Um, anyway, that's the context. On the wall of the church, to the right, in French. L'usage du téléphone portable est interdit dans, dans cette salle. That means you can't use your mobile phone. That's normal. So everybody agrees with that. But underneath was what struck my attention. Les versets à réviser et mémoriser. A list of verses that this church was committing to learn and memorize and meditate together. Huh. They can't necessarily read. <laughs> they can't necessarily write. But they can listen and they can memorize and are committing together to knowing the essential truths of God's words and be able to speak them into each other's lives. Do we have this same respect despite all the access that we have to the word of God and all the languages that we have it in? <laughs> and again, this is not to guilt anybody. This is just to show you the attitude that impressed me in this church in Ivory Coast concerning the word of God. So, so why is it then that the psalmist responds like this to this word? This is the third thing we want to see. And essentially what we have is all the way through the psalmist expressing his prior love for the word of God. I mentioned earlier that I was a teacher in, in uh, Ireland. I taught French for nine years. And so I had young boys. I only taught in boys' school. And the boys were from 11 to 18. And I had 30 young boys arrive uh, in my class, ages 11, for their very first uh, class of French. And my aim, my only aim in the first year of them learning French was to make them want to learn it. Okay, so grammar and vocabulary and all those things, that would come after. 
But the thing I wanted above all for those 30 young boys was that they would love French and want to learn it. And if you love French and you want to learn it, everything else is easy. But if you don't love it and you don't want to, then you can do what you like. <laughs> You'll never learn it. And so I would go, I'll do, just give you an example with Oni. Oni, come here. This, imagine Oni is 11 years old. <laughs> and he's quite small. And he would come into my classroom, and I'd say, Eh, hey, Oni, ça va? Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Ça Alors, va. moi, je m'appelle Philippe. Et moi, j'ai 40 ans. Consente. Very good, well done. But by repeating and by doing this kind of lively presentation of French, the boys' faces would light up and they start wanting to speak French to understand what I was saying, why I was saying it, how I was saying it. And um, I would say to them, you know, if we learn French well, then by the time we get to the trip to Paris in June, trip to Paris, we're going to Paris. Yeah, we go to Paris. And they were thinking, I want to learn French. It looks like a really fun thing to do. Plus, if I learn French well, we can get to go to Paris. And they wanted to learn French. And all the, the, the parents who used to come to visit me at the end of the first term, they were astonished because they thought their sons were going to prefer maths or science or, or something else. And their sons were going back home and saying, oh, we love French. <laughs> it's amazing. And now I'm in a church. I'm only joking. We delight, verse 14. We want to meditate, verse 15. It's a great treasure, 16. And then, explosively, time after time after time again, the psalmist says we love the word of God in verse 47 and verse 48 and verse 97 and verse 111 and verse 127 and verse 140, 167. He lifts his hands up to the commands of God which he loves. Do you love the word? Do you love the word? Because if you love the word, nothing will prevent you reading the word. And you see, in the start of January, um, if South Africans are like um, French people and English people and Irish people, what you do is uh, you see somebody post on Instagram or, or on Twitter, I've just started a new program, I'm going to read the Bible in three weeks, um, and the Psalms twice. And you think, oh no, <laughs> me, oh dear. And then so you think, okay, I'm going to start to read the Bible, X number of chapters a day, and it works for a week, and then you miss a day because something happens. And then you start feeling really guilty. So here we go. I don't think God cares how many chapters you read a day. I don't think he cares. I don't think that the Bible is arranged so that you can divide it into 365 chunks <laughs> and then read it. I, I, sometimes I, I look at what we try to do as evangelicals and I think, what on earth are we doing? Why, why are we devising plans to read the Bible in a year as if there's some magic thing that happens if you manage to read 66 books of the Bible? And, what, why do we do that? Uh, interest me. But what I am interested in and what this psalm is interested in is not how many chapters we read, but do we love the word? And do we want to get it into our bloodstream? So whatever we think about, whatever we watch, whatever we listen to, whatever we hear, whoever we're talking to, when we speak, the Bible is there. So, so that when we speak to somebody during the day, we give them the benefit of what we've meditated on in the morning. Whether that's half a verse or a whole chapter, it doesn't matter. Has God spoken to you? He will if you open his word. If you love his word, you'll open his word. And then you will have something to say to people every day. Every single day because you love the word. We love the word. We read the word. And we share the word. Look at what Tim Keller said. I read this recently on Twitter. What the heart most wants, the mind finds reasonable. The emotions find valuable and the will finds doable. So apply that to any area of your life and then apply it to the reading and meditating of the Word of God. If your heart wants it, you will do it. We always do what we want to do without exception. So I'm working on my heart and I want this sound to work on all of our hearts so that we love the Word and if we love the Word, then what the heart most wants, the mind finds reasonable, the emotions find valuable, the will finds doable. I'll switch off Netflix. I'll get myself into a quiet place. And my mind will be thinking, good idea, Philip. And my emotions will be thinking, great, I can't wait. And my schedule will be thinking, certainly can't fit it in. Because that's how it works. 
And that's what the psalmist wants to do. He wants to convince us that this is beautiful. And so what happens? What happens when we start to respond to the word of God like this? Here it is. You find yourself having a living relationship with God through his word. A living relationship. You see, all the way through this psalm, the first three verses, and maybe you could look at your Bibles in the first three verses of this psalm. You see how it starts? It starts by saying, happy. Happy is the man. Happy is the person. How happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk according to the Lord's instruction. Happy are those who keep his decrees and seek him with all their heart. They do nothing wrong. They walk in his ways. Those first three verses are kind of a mission statement. Then after that, the psalmist breaks into prayer where he talks directly to God. So in other words, the word doesn't become a sterile religion. The word becomes a living relationship with the living God. He starts saying you, your instruction, your word, your law, your commands, I'm in a relationship with you and you're talking to me and I have, through this word, a living relationship with you so that, verse 10, I have sought you with all my heart. Don't let me wander from your commands. That is the dynamic of this psalm. As we come to the word with this attitude, we find ourselves relating to God in a living way. And that has never changed. That has always been the way that God has dealt with his people. Right from the Garden of Eden when he gives his word to Adam, right through to Revelation where he gives his word to the Spirit to give to the churches. God is always a speaking God through his word to his people. And so we have a living relationship with God through his word. Look at verse 45. Who doesn't want this in their life? I walk freely in an open place because I study your precepts. That, that is the, the, the Christian walking with his God in an open place wherever he is. He could be in a prison, and Paul was. But because he had the word of God, because he believed the word of God, because of the delivering relationship with God through the word, he was walking in an open place even though he was in prison because he was with God, because he was studying his precepts. Th- this is the word of God in your real life right now. This is my comfort in my affliction. Your promise has given me life. Who needs to hear that today? Do we not all need to hear that today? If you're afflicted today, God comes to you in his word and says, my promise will give you life right now. I'm always astounded by the, by the flow and the dynamic of Daleth. It's the fourth uh, verse, fourth stanza. Look at verse 25. If you have the Bible on your smartphone or anything else. Look how verse 25 starts. My life is down in the dust. Give me life through your word. And then the verses go through each other. And verse 32, the end of this stanza, I pursue the way of your commands. I'm running in the way of your commands for you brought my understanding from the dust to the joyous pursuit of God in eight short verses because the word of God really does give you life in a living relationship with God. This is the promise for us. This is the promise for all who do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ. As we bring this word to them, uh, those verses that I've listed, I don't have time to go through them, but verse 25, verse 71, verse 73, 99, 105, 136, look at those. The promise of life and a living relationship with God through his word is for everybody right now. When I was uh, meditating on this psalm uh, at the beginning of the year, I would put it on in the car. I don't know if you know Streetlight. Does anybody know Streetlight? The amazing, so go, go to Psalm 119 Streetlights on Spotify or wherever you listen to your music. Um, and they have a superb rendition of this psalm. I put it on in the car. And obviously, many of the verses are, I have kept your precepts. I have kept your commands. I have obeyed your law. And Zoe, the nine-year-old that I talked about recently, uh, when, when he was asking questions, says, this guy's a little bit self-righteous, isn't he? He's a little bit kind of proud. I thought, oh, interesting comment. Um, Zoe didn't react very well to to that aspect of the psalm. Uh, And maybe you're thinking and listening and saying, okay, um, if this is what the Christian life is meant to be like, and if this is the kind of attitude I'm meant to have to the Word of God, I'm feeling actually I fall way short. I'm feeling pretty guilty. (laughs) Uh, I'm feeling pretty discouraged. Uh, and even all the, the amazing things that 
the psalmist sees in the word and that the preacher's talking about it's not really where I am and this is what I said to Zoe when she said what she said the last verse of this psalm is in fact probably the most important because we've got a living relationship with God through his word and we aspire to love his word and we aspire to live out his word and we aspire to obey his precepts but look at the last verse Psalm 119 verse 176 I wander like a lost sheep seek your servant for I do not forget your commands it ends on a note not of triumph but of desperation the psalmist is seeking for the good shepherd who will come and find his sheep in other words you cannot understand Psalm 119 unless you look through it to the one who would fulfill it completely the Lord Jesus Christ who alone could say I have always kept your commands reread the psalm thinking of Jesus Christ looking at him in the dust and his affliction as he's persecuted as the arrogant mock him as princes condemn him reread the psalm and think of Jesus Christ see how he fulfills it perfectly and then see how you at the end of the psalm can say I am a wandering lost sheep I have turned aside to my own ways and yet the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he is the good shepherd who comes to find his sheep who lays down his life for his sheep John chapter 10 he is the one who comes and despite the fact that we do not live up to Psalm 119 he takes it all he dies for us he rises from the grave and he says now I come and follow me and I will show you how to love the word so that you can have a living relationship with the Lord through me, through my life, my death, my resurrection and the only way we get to that the only way we get to know what Jesus did what he said, who he is the word of God I know nothing about Jesus unless it's in the Bible and so I come back to the Bible to have the relationship that I need with the living Lord through the life and the death of Jesus Christ that is the absolute summit of the Lord of the word of the Lord so we wander like lost sheep we sin and we sin again but we say Lord seek your servant for I do not forget your commands we're going to pray now and we're going to sing that this word that is about Jesus really is the lamp for our feet let's pray Lord we want to be rooted the word we want this word to characterize our lives individually and collectively in every way as Lord we beg that you will give us a love and a desire for your word so that we read it and meditate it and so that it changes us as we see wondrous things as we see the wondrous thing in your word the life and death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ